Smart Wargames here. Let's do another custom 3D models tutorial. This time we will talk about rack uh, replacements. But you could also apply the methods uh, we talk about on similar objects like not only vehicle racks but also bunkers, um, fortifications, foxholes stuff, um, other stuff like this. There are some differences when replacing wrecks in comparison to flavor object like stuff you can place on a map and we will talk about the difference, differences and the, 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 the pros, pro and cons about both methods. Yeah, backstory. Uh, there was a scenario I forgot. Um, I was planning to play. It's called coup d'état. It is a single scenario. However, it's it um, has it offers such a complexity that you could you could also call it a dynamic campaign. A one scenario campaign. You see, the time is four hours, and there's a lot of dynamic stuff triggers going on and the course of mission, the objectives change while playing, so for me it hits the check mark for being a campaign. There's another similar scenario for Black Sea called Tactical Operations Center or TOC, I uh, also still have on my list. I want to play, it's also a huge scenario, huge map for hours and basically like a, yeah, like a campaign, but in this we need, from what I've got, I didn't dig too deep into it, we need to overthrow a government. And that sounds um, after my liking. And yeah, and this scenario offers, um, offers some naval component, amphibious component. Um, you are basically like I said, I didn't check it, everything I want to check it when I start the playthrough to check the extensive briefings and, one, and, and, and to dig into it then but um, you start with an with some carriers, carrier group an US carrier group which might assist you and in, in overthrowing the corrupt government of a harbor city And yeah, I've months ago, I've in preparation for this playthrough, I've designed not all ships, but designed this aircraft carrier because I wanted to test it out and also for eye candy, and that's the current result. Um, there were basic, basically um, some recreative buildings on the map. Um, really some interesting map methods, everybody should check out the scenario, you know, can also load it in the scenario editor. And yeah, I covered basically the originals, you will take a look at them, with custom models. Um, an aircraft carrier, yeah sure, it's it's um, Russian stuff, uh, two Ozers and I think that must be uh, this, this Russian aircraft carrier. Um, you know, it, you not always have big choice um, for finding suitable models and I also don't, didn't want to invest so much time. Most of these models I made in, I don't know, five to ten minutes, the conversions, and I think that's fine, you know, if sure somebody could look up a USS, uh, some USS um, destroyers to, rep to, to replace them or, I don't know, what was it for an aircraft carrier, there's a name attached to it. Or c could find a vast model. There's stuff if you find if you look for it, you will find. But I'm happy with it, and I think it looks quite beautiful. And yeah, about the original designs, like I said, it's buildings, and it's really interesting. Never seen something like this. Um, scenario autos should re definitely check this out. There's a building. Uh, it's, this was the ship on the map, and yeah, there are even roads in the in the buildings. Quite interesting, and yeah, you can use it as some sort of really carrier for amphibious, um, the ships aren't there, 
but they will come and they can oops um, I've not replaced all LOD files need to check this out there's one LOD file which is still old yeah I didn't put that much work into it um, there is some little you see it's not perfectly attached I could open them quickly in Blender, make it a bit bigger or reposition the rack I've used as a base and similar here it's a little bit looking out the original ship but you still can go into the model see the original and yeah um, I'm using the OSA ship for this it still has the, the BMP base I don't mind that and a really interesting ships um, building designs for the ships and we I'm quite excited to play it, to see how it uh, looks when we use the amphibious, the, the LAVs or what you get provided. I think something was in a briefing that you can use them, can't use them as some sort of US intervention into the crisis. Same here for the shipwreck, and this is a similar ship to this here. Yeah, I think uh, there is even, aren't there even... vehicles inside they might spawn um, later but there is even he someone managed to place into the building he managed to place um, AA vehicles I think so they can even fire and yeah I covered them with custom models and I used rack replacements for it why did I use racks why not custom objects like I don't know some telephone pole or whatever a, Rex have the big advantage that they have basically in unlimited draw distance. I mean this map isn't that big, but I wanted to be sure that when I am really far away with the camera, you know, the flavor, object, uh, flavor objects on the map, they have a limited draw distance. However, tall stuff like street lamps, telephone poles, they have also huge draw distance. You see they aren't blending out. You might not see it on the stream, but I can still spot it. Sometimes if you watch the items, small boxes, you see this here, it disappears, but telephone poles, tall stuff doesn't disappear. So they are safe to use. However, on big maps, on really big maps, and when using really big custom models, you still might notice a popping. I didn't test it on this map because, like I said, it was just a private mod to prepare my playthrough for, for eye candy, for having some nice amphibious uh, aircraft um, carrier group there. I didn't test it with flavor objects, but um, immediately went for the rack method. And yeah, this is the first big pro of the rack method wrecks basically they are similar to vehicles they have basically i don't know if you can if they ever fade out but you even as big objects like this aircraft carrier won't notice that he suddenly disappears second advantage or could, could be as a disadvantage it's important to keep in mind you, s you see the ship here it's it's not even i d did this on purpose yeah it's not perfectly aligned with the shipwreck if I would put more work into it, I would align it more better to hide it. But I even like it, you know, it looks like something, I don't know, dropped from the ship and or something, I don't know, uh, an, an, an installation on the ship with the time and corrosion dropped down. And I also wanted to keep the, the, the map, map marker here. So I'm happy with it. And I could align it like this way, but I wanted to experiment and I wanted to turn the ship um, 45 degrees and how did this happen? I didn't do this in the model software, you could also do it in Blender you could only select the custom model parts, not the base and start to rotate it, but um, I was too lazy for it and wrecks like vehicles, you know, if there's a little hill I uh, placed a little hill here can't see the vehicle, but you see a box, it's basically the ba base primer box, I always use it. I always import our original combat mission model, most times this box, and with everything, me metadata, whatever. And then 
I import the custom model and attach it to it. That's always how I worked it out. Otherwise, I, this is my method and for me it works and others use it as well. Otherwise, my, the models might not show up in game. So I always use this as a base, especially for vehicle and flavor object replacements. It's an original combat mission certified cardboard box or whatever. <laughs> and then I add the custom model on it. And yeah, you can, here I placed a little hill. I elevated or replaced the water with a little hill. You still can't see it, but it's enough that you can, the vehicle is still there or the, the box is behaving um, according to the ground. It looks weird, but if you move the object around, it will basically dynamically adapt to the hill. And this will also shift the complete model. I even managed but it looked a bit too crazy, but still looked great. This model I managed that it was sticking out, out of the water like the Titanic. This, but it was too much, it looked a bit crazy. Especially in this water depth, it would be uh, and so near to the coast. It, but it looked great. It looked like this, the, the, this part of the ship was sticking out of the water. Because I placed basically, I rotated, rotated around, experimented and... Yeah, that's a big advantage, but... I, you also have to keep in mind, I'm not sure if flavor objects, like, you know, like stuff like this, I mean, it also does this, right? It isn't floating in air, it also has terrain adapt, um, adapts to the terrain. Can't tell really, because um, I never tried it myself, you know, flavor objects like, yeah, it's like stuff like this. I don't know, if you place a telephone pole on a hill, will it stick out? I think it will always stay this way. I mean, you can rotate it. But I don't think it will um, basically um, traverse or, or in the in the horizon axis. Whatever, that's a big thing. Rex, another little advantage, but um, like I said, it's already explained in another tutorial. Tutorial. The origin, the wreck. If you replace a wreck, it still has the original LOS line of sight and LOF line of fire blocking of the original stuff you replace. For example, you pl replace a big marines vehicle, it will have the line of sight, line of fire blocking, but only of the original vehicle. So for this, you would have a little blocking here, but the rest wouldn't be blocked. I also don't recommend to work like this. The gold standard right now is simply use, place a custom model. Let's say this would be ground. Sure, it's now high. And then you place, I don't know, invisible walls, invisible racks, invisible bunkers, invisible bushes, a lot of bushes and it will it will um, give you the same, you know, the use this blank BMP, it's over all over the forums um, when you attach a blank BMP to a combat mission model, it becomes invisible and you never need all models and all stuff in your scenario and so you can use it and you know, I will show you again the mod tag method and with the mod tech method, you can conveniently create um, stuff which you can use to uh, also made. There's a video on my channel that how, how, to, how it looks then. You can have everything and with proper placement, you can give this this every every custom object proper line of sight, line of fire blocking. And make them even indestructible. You know, Rex, for example, if you place a big line of Rex here, sure, it's a big object, but let's assume like this. Messerschmitt, or, what, or, the, or the, the ruins, the ruins where um, you can place invisible stuff into it and create even, even you know, with inter intelligent wreck placement, you can create even, um, yeah, um, tunnels and, and, and ways um, according to the model. It's everything possible. You can create, you simply use this combination method. Okay, and yeah, we talked about the rotation. Another disadvantage about Rex is they can't be pli placed that tightly together. If you replace multiple Rex, uh, if you replace, let's say, uh, I don't know, BMP Rex, a BMP vehicle, and then you, uh, for some reason, you replace it with an object that is smaller than the original BMP, you can't place them together. You know, there's this Hesco mod I've did, um, and some people struggle because they replaced big flavor objects, I always recommend you to replace, if you go for flavor object replacements, tall and um, 
not 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 um, fat, <laughs> like this street lamps, telephone poles. Um, yeah, you get it. This this tall stuff because you can stuck them together so closely they won't collide with each other. But if you replace, for example, what is a big flavor object here on the map? You know, for example, this here, this bus shelters. This here, this is a big flavor object. You can't stack them together, they will collide and it will look and once you go out of the 3D vision they will um, get get uh, moved. Um, the distance will ri rise. So always use stuff like this, especially if you want to s use Haskos or whatever and you want to build fortresses. And this Hesco is a perfect example. Build a Hesco line, let's say you want to make a block here, you build here a Hesco line. If you want it to be indestructible, place some invisible wrecks here. <coughs> but infantry could still play, um, pass, I think. And if you want it completely not, you could even combine wrecks with with walls, and then then you have a complete block. Or you could also, I don't know, and together with terrain, you know, there are terrain tiles that are inaccessible. Big walls, wrecks, invisible bunkers, whatever you can then combine this, but um, if you want to stuck to stick custom models closely together by replacing flare objects, use this tall big objects, uh, tall and s uh, slim objects, slim to stack them closer together and tall so they will have, you see we still see it, we still see it, we still see it, we still see it, I still see something, I think now uh, it might be disappeared, I can't tell, but it's so slim, now I still see it, there's some pixels lighting up and they have a good draw distance. Okay. Yeah, what else about and ah exempt ex exactly. Um the edge map edge. And in general, custom models don't need to be physically attached to the primer. Let's um, take this box again as an example. I've made a screenshot about a flying black hawk with a rotating um rotor and this box here for example could be on the ground and this cargo ship simply by moving it in blender up they still have a relation to each other but they don't need to be physically connected it could be floating here and there it doesn't make sense of course but it might provide something interesting but it's really not needed but nice to know is um, for example this aircraft carrier if he wanted we could leave the primer object, I think it's also a box, oh no, it's a sh I used a bus shelter for it. You can't see it, where is it? I placed it somewhere inside here. I think it was a shelter, but don't get confused. Um, it's basically only to as a primer for the model. The other, I did enough tutorials where you can watch the work progress, how, um, the work, how it looks like. First import a standard combat mission object, then add a custom model on it. And what I want to talk about is the map edge. Um, there is no limitation on the map edge for showing up models. You might notice it also when your artillery misses, it will still show even on the on the beyond the map edge. So we could even by the primer object must be on the map. But if you in Blender, I don't know, for some reason decide to move the aircraft carrier, I don't know, 500 meters back. Not sure if it, it could be. I mean, it's possible. I did a did a size test. Looks like this engine can handle everything. Only thing that is important is the field of view issue. If you, of course, uh, this might. But uh, whatever, you can move an object into the into the the wasteland behind the map, map corner, and for some reason have scenery back there. I mean, it could be even possible, I don't think it lo would look great to have some, I don't know what, um, city, but uh, not needed. But s keep in mind, if, I don't know, people come up with ideas, 3D objects can float behind the map edge, for if you need it for some reason. And yeah, if you go close enough to the model, we already talked it, it will disappear, the custom model shell will disappear. So it's quite a good idea, and you don't only need to do it for ships. You will see then the... The interior, like if somebody would be in the building, the interior is, and you can check it. And this, of course, enables some ideas, not only for um, ships, but for example, you could design a building shell. 
General Sir Anthony, hi hi, what's up? Yeah. Welcome to the stream. You could design a you could use the standard combat mission buildings, design something, and then you could put a custom model, I don't know, a skyscraper, a military building, a whatever, as, as, as um, shell. And you still have the ability from outside, it looks eye candy, it looks like you want to look it. And if you go inside, it will disappear and you see the in, uh, inside, you know, for the tactical situations when you need to, um, to attend your force inside or if you need to fight in a building, you still have the ability to check the original combat mission buildings. Yeah, that's it. I'm, like I said, in the near future I will play it. Looks really great. Really interested, interesting. And about, let's see, did I talk about everything? Burning, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, one important thing. When using Rex, um, I've used Rex here and set them to destroy it. And it's basically an object. Um, you can't, you, otherwise if you if you replace a vehicle and leave it, it will act like a vehicle. It will act like the original vehicle. For this I use BMP vehicles as replacements, because I don't think the BMPs are present in the mission. And my initial idea was, because BMPs are amphibious, I wanted to, rep to place, amphibious vehicles can be placed on water, and then I want to set them to destroy it. However, I've noticed the game crashes. Not when you use custom models, even in vanilla. I'm not sure if it's only for the BMP, but if you use an amphibious vehicle, place it in the water, set it to destroy it, the game doesn't crash in the editor, it will crash when you start the scenario. Looks like the game, either for one vehicle or for all amphibious vehicles, can't handle the situation that a mission designer would have the idea to set a destroyed amphibious vehicle. Um, Vehicles can be destroyed in water in the game, you know, it's, I think they blow up and then they sink to the ground. But you can't set it up this, this way. At least after my, I only tested it and, and found out about it 50 minutes ago. Do you ever play PvP? Yeah, I play sometimes, but um, recently not, not that much. And yeah, so... Keep that in mind, and one dis um, at disadvantage for wreck model replacement in, in comparison to flare objects, wrecks need a valid spot, so they need open ground or something. You can't, for example, uh, a, a flavor object you can place even I think inside buildings, inside whatever bushes, inside vehicles, inside whatever they can be placed in everything. You can also place in the water, but a wreck needs you can, I can't place a wreck in a building it needs open ground so keep this in mind um, and yeah I for example had uh, that's the reason why I wanted to use an amphibious ve um, vehicles but destroy it didn't work out so I did some little work around and placed a sand tile here if you place vehicles on water you know it still looks like in water but it isn't really amphibious and while placing it at the editor, if you hear the engine revving up, it's basically in amphibious mode. If it has this idle engine sound, it's in ground mode. Test it out and you will understand what I'm talking about. That's the little thing I placed here in order to stop the vehicle from being amphibious. Otherwise the scenario would crash. And yeah, um, you can set them to destroy it, but you can also set them to burning if you for some reason want, for example, something to smoke they will create the smokestack you will know from vehicles um, that, that this are destroyed but it's only for a given time and they will automatically stop the smoke ah exactly, uh, exactly, visibility, wreck visibility from what I know if you use wrecks if the wreck is on the player side you will see it from the beginning like this. If the wreck is on the opponent side, you will need to spot it. So if for some reasons you, let's say we wanted these ships, it doesn't make sense, but if we wanted for some reason these ships to be spotted 
as some sort of um, surprise, <clears throat> or some sort of recon mission, recon the carrier group that is in harbor, whatever. It might be the better idea to use an, an enemy wreck, but um, keep in mind the wreck has still the LOS of the original, not of the big aircraft carrier, but of the original placement. But if you use it, I used it for the player side, so they're always visible, right from the beginning, right? because you can see your own wrecks always. But I think enemy wrecks need to be spotted. So this is also an advantage. You can have wrecks always visible, or you can have wrecks that need spotting. Yeah, and that's the three ship model groups I created, aircraft carry, cargo ship, and these two destroyers. And yeah, simply I replaced with a model file, of course, the main model MDR and the four LOD files. I had an issue with the aircraft carrier, let's check it out. I think this file is old. See this, the timing is different and I think that was, that's still old because I've noticed in, in this video that it still sometimes changes size. And which, which one was it? Two is old, yeah. So I will simply fix it by replacing it with a new. Uh, and exactly the mod tag, you see there's a tag attached to it called Coop. That's I didn't want it to add a new, I don't want it to mess around with the scenario too much. I've noticed in the editor that the scenario always already comes with, with mod tags and one more tag is Q. And so I simply decide to attach everything to this. So I can leave it in my mod folder. I don't need to manually move, remove it. I don't, um, you know, sh as you can do it manually. I mean, if, but if you leave it without mod tag in the folder and you play a scenario with a BMP free, with a lot of BMP frees, you will get um, a lot of aircraft carriers driving over the roads and you will think what the hell. And this means basically will only load for something that is calling this mod tag. Yeah. And one thing about if you work, I've included it now in my in my work scheme. Let's load one of the models quickly. Um yeah. Let's say for some reason we want to resize it. And yeah, that's the basic object here, the sign back. Okay, that's not this object here that was the original object, and then I imported basically everything that is this aircraft carrier and put it under the group of the original combat mission model. And you know, you need to watch out that it's triangulated, most models are triangulated. I forgot the hotkey, but I've made everything is in this thread. Please skim this thread before you start um, at least get uh, one time over it watch some of the videos that simply is um, because it doesn't make that much sense to jump right into it and then um, ask a thousand questions why stuff isn't working when the information is presented there and let's say we want to resize it because the aircraft carrier isn't big enough or whatever I will select only the parts of the aircraft carrier, of the custom model, and then you can press scale, make it bigger. And sometimes, especially with vehicles, I've noticed this can cause issues. Especially when cannons are involved or whatever. Sometimes the models distort for some reason. And I, in the end, always add this here, or even for all specific parts, object, apply, rotation and scale. I'm not sure, perhaps it's only placebo, but for me it helps, I never had this exploding model, model issues again. Always before exporting, I apply rotation and scale. It basically tells everything to zero into the new whatever. I'm not a model 3D expert, I can't tell you anything about it. I just learned the, the ropes in order to get things done. But I can't explain you the, I don't know, the scientific background of what is there happening. You need to ask a 3D model artist, a blender, 3D max, whatever expert. Then you go simply to export and always if you use something which comes with a new model part, you can't export metadata. So that's yeah, always to keep in mind. If you try to export with metadata, we can try it. Um, test 
he will call an error. Okay, see. As always, if you use something new, something custom, that is not consisting only of original combat mission models. So combining models is fine. You can export metadata on combined, combined models like this. Uh, steward, flux steward. But when you add something new like this aircraft carrier, you need to remove the check mark. And then you could yeah, whatever. T -t test, delete. And then you can export it will work out. No error shown, it's exported. Yeah, and that's it. Let's see. Yeah, we talked about this, we talked about this. LOS, LOF blocking, that was what I meant with the walls. Or with the, you can use walls, you can use racks, visible or invisible. They will still inherit their original capabilities. So for example, and you can also destroy custom objects. You can destroy this aircraft carrier. It will disappear, it won't blow up in a big... But um, custom objects are also, for example, by artillery, I made a video about it, they can get destroyed. <clears throat> so you can, for example, add, I don't know, a Hesco barrier, build walls inside of it, or bushes, or a hatch. I think hatches can also get blown open, and when I'm, but um, yeah, because this is so often, uh, so often um, questioned. Yes, by combining custom models with visible or invisible walls, racks, bunkers, bushes, trees, whatever, you can make them into something like like yeah into something with with LOS and LOF blocking and movement blocking. Okay, I think that's it. Take a closer look. I think I will leave it this. Could make this ship a bit bigger to hide this, but I, I would, here the building is looking a bit out. Could place the vehicle a bit to the um, from from its direction to the left, but I don't know. It's okay. Looks like it's something up. still looking to. It's completely fine. But I really like the buildings here inside. Really. Um, this is road network here. Never seen something like this, but interesting. And you can park. Uh, that's that's the primer. That's the primer of the aircraft carrier. And you can park vehicles inside it. Look here. That's some sort of hangar. And you can drive out and in of it with amphibious vehicles. Really great idea. So um, every um, map designer, I recommend to check this out uh, in the editor if after playing, of course, um, in order to. To because some are, some never seen some stuff like this w didn't even know that you can design tunnel streets in combat mission. Uh, so it's on some screenshots was thinking perhaps it's some placement but looks like they are really um, you can drive inside outside of it. Also this building um, he left some open there he placed I think AA vehicles or whatever really great idea. Okay, that's it. Let's call it. See you.